Hi there and welcome to this video about DS918 Plus cache upgrade. So we're going to talk about what drives did I use and how to install them. Setting up cache in the DSM, some speed tests with copying files and then a synthetic crystal mark test. We also try to look at virtual machines and finally general benefits and practicality and whether it's worth it. Great, so I used SSD 720 from Intel on my Synology DS918 Plus, which is the only four bay that comes with um, this option. I used two 56 gigabyte versions. Um, I think for the price and what they deliver, these are really good and very affordable um, NVMe drives. As you can see, all you need to do is turn off your Synology, turn it over, turn it upside down, remove those two latches. And um, as you can see, I'm showing that um, this NVMe drive has only one notch. If your drive has two notches, then it's M.2 SATA, which will not work. The system will not accept it. So you have to have the NVMe. So make sure that when you're purchasing, um, you got that. Setting up cache in the DSM. First, what you need to do is go to a virtual machine manager. And if you have any VMs running, turn them off. Otherwise you will get an error message. Now go to your storage manager and go to the bottom SSD cache on your left and go create. I'm creating read and write cache mode. Click next. Both devices because uh, you have to use both in RAID 1. Um, I'm keeping skipping sequential I.O. because large files don't benefit from um, having SSD cache anyway. Yes, understand. This will take a few moments to create. Once this has been created, you can see that my cache is already growing 3.5 gig almost. Soon it will jump to 3.8. That's definitely the system is already in place, which means that the hard drives will not have to work as much but i will talk about it later in more detail so let's have a look at some tests and copying large amounts of files so what i'm copying here is folder called instant wordpress which is a uh, your local installation of wordpress with the web server and everything the new version it's a bit different but this old version has still everything in, in one folder and runs Apache and stuff. It's about 6,000 files, uh, 300 megabytes. So, first of all, if you have a look, uh, without SSD, it's almost 1.23 seconds, 1 minute and 23 seconds. And when you use SSD cache, it'll drop to 52 seconds. So, which is about 30 seconds decrease in time, which is fantastic. Second run, I second run I run on SSD cache was was with iSCSI, and that dropped to amazing 14 seconds because it was already in the cache. I thought it was pretty phenomenal time. Third run, I tried with uh, SMB, so your backslash backslash and your Synology, and the time actually increased as opposed to the first time. I'm not really sure why that is i kept all the settings the same um, all the vms were running no other processes no other traffic on the network so i can't really explain it but i'm just reporting what my computer did number four crystal mark test so this is a one mega one gigabyte file excuse me uh, with cache on the right and no cache on the left as you can see, it's pretty much even. Um, it's very surprising, to be honest. I expected that the uh, cache is going to win, hands down. But as you can see, it only won with the um, small files, um, Q1. Um, but otherwise, large files, it was pretty much on par, actually, with no cache even faring better. Um, the 50 megabyte file actually no cache dominated primarily in writing um, i was really surprised about this i'm not really sure what it is but this is again what 
I'm reporting. This is both of the tests were done on um, SMB, so just accessing your network directly or your Synology directly. Number five, virtual machines. So virtual machines really benefit from having cache because you're running essentially a full operating system that has lots of tiny files. And I've got three virtual machines running. And one of them, the middle one is Ubiquity controller, which runs Java and some services for Ubiquity. Full load without cache takes about three minutes and 30 seconds. With cache, it dropped down to two minutes and 30 seconds. I thought that was really, really good considering the CPU. Number six, general benefits and practicality. General benefit is obviously increased speed and it's huge, mainly with repeated use and iSCSI. I have to do some more testing. I'm really sure, not really sure what has happened or why that happened, but it's what happened. Um, it's definitely quieter. My Synology is running for Iron Wolf drives, which can be a bit noisy. I used to use the um, Seagate for, oh, sorry, yes, four terabyte ones. Now I'm using six terabyte Iron Wolves. They are much noisier. But now, since the system is all in cache, it doesn't need to run as much, doesn't need to search through the system, and it's much, much quieter. This also translates to prolonged. Uh, longevity for the hard drives because they don't need to run as often and if you're not running anything that needs to run 24 7 like VMs your drives can probably go to hibernation um, I don't have any hibernation so my drives never go to hibernation state but your your case might vary as I mentioned VMs do start faster and you can probably use more resources. So if you have 16 gigabytes of RAM, you can run a couple of VMs, um, you can run Docker, you can run uh, virtual DSM. So you can run a few things without affecting your performance. Um, and I was really surprised by how well it's been faring. Also, massive increase in speed load is for multimedia applications such as VS Video, Plex, um, your classic multimedia. It used to be that some of the multimedia files would load from Plex, you know, five, seven seconds. Now it's almost instantaneous. Like I'm really, really surprised how great that has been for these use cases. And as I mentioned, iSCSI seems to benefit more. I really don't know why that is. Um, I need more testing for that. But definitely iSCSI has some benefits and some drawbacks. Obviously, it's, it's very hard to access iSCSI with more than one um, connection. You have to have some system aware um, iSCSI so you don't get conflicted files, conflicted writes that would mess up your, um, your system. But if you have workstation or server um, that you can connect directly rather than via UNC, or SMB, then definitely go for it. I, I think your system is going to benefit a lot from it. So in conclusion, is it worth getting the cache? Well, because I already invested so much in the system, for me, it was definitely worth it. I'm running quite a few things. Speed is very important to me. That's why I pretty much always upgrade uh, to a newer phone because of the speed increase or <laughs> I have to say decrease of the old one. So for me, it's definitely worth it. My virtual machines run smoother, my, my multimedia application run faster, and my copying, when I do that, also run faster. Even though probably with time, I don't realize the significance of the increase, um, but for right now, it's definitely worth it. 256 gig I found is the, the maximum price I'm currently willing to pay. I don't think going to 500 gig for two drives that would be, I think, a bit of a, an excessive exercise and uh, negate the value for me. So 256, I think it's pretty, pretty reasonable and 
I think it's really good. Great, so that's it from me for this test. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you haven't, and see you next time.